Hello, I'm Erica Scotti. I am a clinical psychology doctoral student in my fourth year at MSU. And today I'm going to be talking about how to write a personal statement for graduate school. So welcome. I'm going to go through different reasons why you need to write a personal statement and kind of what the purpose of a personal statement is in the admissions process. Then I'm going to go through step by step talking about the formatting and what to include in your personal statement. Now, this might be slightly different for different programs, as some programs are going to have a specific prompt for you to follow, but most will be able to be followed through this format. I'm also going to go through some of the common mistakes that people make on these pro different statements and then give you some tips for a very successful essay. So the primary purpose of a personal statement is for us to get to know you and for the program to get to know you. So this is going to tell us who you are at a personal level. So maybe what brought you into this field, what is it that initially inspired you to go to graduate school, as well as some of the smaller intricacies. Um, it's going to tell us what you have accomplished beyond your CV. So beyond a list of activities, we need to see how you sought out different opportunities. What was it about those opportunities that will prepare you for graduate school? As well as maybe see some of the things that you are interested in. Additionally, it's going to show us how you fit with the program, and this may be one of the most important things. So what this means is, especially for a psychology program, they want to see that your research interest and clinical research is a perfect fit for specific advisors or mentors in their program. And they also want to make sure that their training is matching your expectations. So make sure that you don't go into this personal statement talking about how great it would be to be Freud with a couch and psychoanalysis if their program doesn't focus on this at all. This could also be something similar if you want to focus on schizophrenia and their program doesn't have a single class in psychosis no didactics in psychosis, and they're located in, say, Starkville, Mississippi. The likelihood of you getting a psychotic case here is much lower than it's going to be in some other programs. And there are no faculty here at this particular program that focus in schizophrenia or psychosis, so that may be a red flag that you don't belong in this program. Other red flags are going to include things like telling us about your own mental health history. Show us that you are not the demands of graduate school. On a very superficial level, it also helps your writing ability. So on our CV and through our classes, it's very hard to tell whether or not you've ever written a paper before, if you're able to get ideas across in a clear way to your audience and to be able to target different materials to a specific audience. And your personal statement is a way of showing us all of those skills. Additionally, it's also a great way to show us why you are special. In programs like psychology, a lot of graduate student applicants are going to have a GPA of a 3.5 or better and amazing GRE scores. Your personal statement is your way of showing why you are going to be special in this field and in that department. Maybe you are somebody who always reaches out to others and thinks of others first. Maybe you've shown this through your volunteering work or through your work ethic. Maybe you are really organized and you can't wait to set up a database for them that helps them with X, Y, and Z. And you've done this before at this program and this program. Being able to highlight these things will also help you to stand out in the admissions process. For instance, if you decided to work with Weevils 
and this has informed your theoretical background on this, and you can't wait to see if something you learned there applies over to psychology, that's great. You're going to, yes, you'll be known as the weevil person on interview day, but that means that they remembered your personal statement, and they probably went back and looked at your other materials in more detail. And that's the whole point of you writing this personal statement. So what exactly goes into a personal statement? So again, the length of these may be slightly different. Some programs are only going to give you one page, single spaced, and other programs are going to let you have an unlimited amount of writing. But the same formatting really applies. For the first introduction statement, you're going to spend about a quarter or one third of your total personal statement talking about what drew you to the psychology field, what inspires you, what drives you, and what motivates you to succeed. This can be a bit tricky, but you really do want to say kind of what is it that made you special about psychology? Go beyond the basic statement of I want to help people, or I want to learn more about the brain and the body. Everybody in psychology wants to do those things. You want to do a little bit more than that. Maybe there's something specific um, about the way that people interact or the way they communicate, or maybe you've always been fascinated about why people lie or how individuals who are depressed can still have healthy relationships. Make sure that this is what's showing in your personal statement. Having this section shows that there is something that is deeper within you that will drive you to continue to seek answers and to work hard through graduate, graduate school. Additionally, if you have an end goal in mind, like you want to go into academia or you want to be a clinician, this is a great place to put that. Show that there is something in the future that you are grasping towards and that there is a solid reason that you are reaching for that goal. It's also important to show off a bit of your personality in this section. So this could just be talking about something that interests you or um, your own personal interests. And this whole section, this one quarter or one third, you could just have a simple sentence of what you want to do and why, a sentence about why you specifically chose this school. So perhaps there was an advisor who was there or a specific series of classes that they have offered that other schools haven't, or perhaps it's a specific population. Some psychology schools will allow you to work with homeless populations, have outreach specifically aimed towards children and adolescents. Maybe they have an eating disorders unit at their psych unit, and that is something that you are very excited to work with. Make sure that you're highlighting this in this first one fourth. This lets them know that you actually understand where you fit in this program and that it is something that specifically drives you in graduate school. And then end with a sentence about how you're going to succeed no matter whether or not the school takes you. So one common misstep on our statements is that we like to say things like, I hope and I believe and I want. Um, obviously, you want these things. Obviously, you believe them because you're saying them. So make sure that you're deleting all of these sentences and acting as if you've already got the job. Like, I can't wait to take this first step on this journey. I hope that I will be, or um, again with the hopes, <laughs> I can't wait to take this step on this journey um, and I welcome you to take this step with me. Things like that are gonna show that this is something that even if they admit you, they're gonna be seeing you again. And that will show them again that you plan to fully succeed in graduate school. The next section, again, another quarter to one third of the statement. So again, this is going to vary in length based on the page limit that you have. But this is where you're going to want to focus on what you have done or accomplished as an undergraduate student that makes you special. 
So again, these are things that you want to say that you sought out, that you completed using those action words. And this could be doing lab work, doing volunteer work specific towards a community or with a specific skill set. Um, writing is especially important. So if you've done an honors thesis, if you've done um, outside papers for a class, any professional posters at conferences, any manuscripts you've been able to help with, data collection or any other sort of individual work that you've done, as well as any awards and recognitions. Remember that these are the highest achieving students in their programs. So having something like the Dean's List every year you've been an undergrad is great, but you also want to go beyond that. Did you get a service award? Did you get a travel grant to go to a conference? Um, what have you done that may be different than other people? And how are these skills specifically going to help you succeed in graduate school? So for example, writing a manuscript may help you to understand the research process from beginning to end. Maybe you honed your writing skills or you developed an entire study, or you got to assist with that process. Maybe you did data analysis, and it really helped you to strengthen your math and statistics skills, or your computational software skills. Additionally, maybe you volunteered somewhere, and that gave you leadership capabilities, and the ability to talk to pretty much anybody. These are skills that you can directly apply to clinical work. Additionally, talking about things like any challenges or weaknesses is appropriate here. If there is an area where you found that you haven't had as much training, or if it's an area where you may struggle with something but you've overcome it, that is a great thing to point out here. Now, I'm not again talking about mental health problems. I'm talking about how you persevered through procrastination. Or maybe you had a fear of public speaking and you did X, Y, and Z that has helped to address that weakness, and now you feel confident going into graduate school. This is also an area to elaborate on things that they won't see in your CV. So if you have a line that just says, on, for six months, I did this job, and at that job, you developed a intervention program that helped minority students to transition into graduate school or undergraduate school. That's something that you might not be able to get from that one line on your CV. So make sure that you're going in and discussing that. Then you're going to conclude the statement. Um, this can be the most specific and generic as well. Um, so hopefully all of the programs that you're applying to have very similar themes. Again, this is going to be about a quarter of your statement. It's going to vary on how many people you want to work with, um, but you want to talk about specifics for their program. What makes you perfect for their program? What are you bringing to the lab that you want to work with? What ideas do you have that you want to share? What is specific about you that is going to improve their program? Now, don't say that you want to improve their program, but at the same time, you do want to show that I have this amazing quality about me, and this is what it's going to look like when I join and I start working for you. Additionally, this is the point when you can print out those specifics about the program that you are very excited about. Maybe you have focused all of your undergrad work as you really wanted to learn about anxiety disorders. And then in graduate school, you want to continue to approach anxiety disorders. And you notice that there is an individual who has done the exact research that you are very excited about. This is the time to point that out and show how your work will either enhance theirs or build off of their work and be as specific as possible. Go out, read this advisor's work, look at their manuscript, and really see where you fit. This is an also a great way to reach out to your own mentors or advisors 
at your university to get some feedback on things that they would want to see in their applicant pool. Also, it's going to be very important that you're picking out specific things about their program at this university that you want to engage in. Maybe they have an awesome course series, or you notice that they're a little bit more stats heavy than other courses, or maybe they focus more on psychopathology. Maybe their program has an intensely detailed physiological program. That is awesome. And you want to be able to say like, hey, I noticed this. this is what drew me to your university. And then again, enhancing that fit. Looking for those training opportunities that you want to engage in. Then at the very end, you're going to add a conclusion. This can be as long or as short as you want it to be. But again, you're just bringing all of that down into one thesis statement. So stating what you want to do with your life, your goals, what your research will be, maybe what you're hoping to accomplish from this program, why the program matches all of those things and why you match that program, and then say why you're excited to discuss these things in more detail at the, at the interview. Again, hit home that you are going to be a successful person in this field, regardless of whether or not this one university takes you. But hopefully, after showing them all of these different qualities, not only will we be showing them that they're going to miss out by not having you in their program, you'll also be showing them that you will fit there and actually enhance their program. So common mistakes. These are pretty specific to psychology programs. So first, don't disclose your mental health problems. Um, we see a lot of individuals who do a personal statement and they talk about a family suicide, their own struggle with bipolar or borderline personality disorder. Maybe they've talked about their own suicide attempts or maybe they've always have struggled with grief. These are not things that you want your graduate school program to know about you this early in the application cycle. First, it shows us that you have a difficulty with boundaries, which is very important in graduate school, especially in a psychology program where we want to see that you understand professionalism. Two, it shows that the added stress of graduate school may be too much. We all like to say that undergrad is very stressful, high school can be very stressful, but you will have all of those stressors plus about 10 hundred more in graduate school, and you want to be able to show that you have the skill set to adequately cope with your stress. And if your mental health is causing you such stress in undergrad, it might transfer over into graduate school. And that's not something that you want to highlight to a program that wants to make sure that you, if they do accept you and put all of this money and time into you, they need to know that you're going to succeed. Also make sure that you're not ignoring your GPA or your GRE. Now not everyone will have a stellar GPA and not everyone will have a stellar GRE score and that's fine. Many programs really only want you to have a GRE that's over the 50 percentile. But because of the way that the GRE is formatted, you could just get screwed on a whole bunch of questions that are very difficult for you. Maybe they're just those ones that you just didn't study or that one formula that you just can't remember. And that can really mess with your GRE scores. Or maybe COVID-19 happened on your senior year of your undergraduate career, or maybe you were homeless for a year and that is why your GPA struggled. Regardless of what it is that has caused the decrease in scores overall, make sure that you at least address it. Um, this is just personal preference, but this is a great way to show growth and that you have overcome some obstacle. Make sure that you're not blaming that obstacle, but instead showing the different ways that you overcame 
to work beyond your GPA or your GRE and can showcase those skills that those two scores would give you. Now, this is just in the personal statement. It is worth noting that some graduate schools will just cut you from the pool, so make sure that you're at least hitting their minimum scores. Another big don't is being generic. And I mentioned several ways that this happens. Make sure that you're not just saying, I wanna go into graduate school in psychology to help people. I've seen many people come into interviews and say such comments. Unfortunately, hopefully everybody in psychology wants to help people in some way. If you came into graduate interviews and said, I don't want to help people, you probably just think you're psychotic um, or really worried about you and your mental health. So make sure that you're avoiding statements like that. Also make sure that you're not saying things like, I'm a hard worker and I know that I don't procrastinate or I look forward to doing research and clinical work. These are all things that are expected of you as a graduate student. You need to rise above and show that there's something specific and unique about you. Another way that people often fail and be generic is in the statement about the school. A lot of students will copy and paste statements from the website. Make sure that you're not just listing off the different interests that a professor has, but going into specifics. What is a specific manuscript that they wrote or a specific outreach program that they had? What is a project that they're working on now that you really want to work on? And tell us why. Go beyond the information that you could quickly access with a click. Another big problem is having poor grammar or spelling. So it's difficult because for these um, different statements, you might have to write several of them. You're gonna wanna make sure that when you're doing all of these statements that they are specific to each school and to each program, which can be difficult if you're planning to apply to more than 10 programs or even just more than five programs. Another common mistake is sending your statement to the wrong school, or not, maybe you changed the statement in certain sections but didn't change that advisor's name, and this happens more often than you think. So make sure you're being very careful. And again, don't ask for the position. Don't ask that they consider you. Don't ask that they will like you or that they will give you some opportunity. Make sure that you are acting proactively. Make sure you're going to seek out, that you are going to attain these things, that you are going to accomplish these things. And yes, it would be great if they actually helped you out, but you're gonna do these things regardless. So things to do. Make sure you're stating your passion for understanding a specific condition or targeting a specific population, or there's a specific question you want answered. So if you want to know why women are more persistent than men, who knows? But make sure that you're putting that in there and showing that that is what is driving your need to go to graduate school. Also show growth. Show some of those strengths, some of the ways that you have overcome those obstacles, whether or not that is just procrastination and online courses, or if it's a boring class, Show us what you did to kind of grow as a human being and in your professional career. Go beyond the website, target the specific program or the advisor, and be as specific as possible. Have someone reread your statements for grammar, spelling, and coherency. And remember to act like you already have the job. You are going to succeed. You did this stuff. No one forced you or just gave these things to you on a platter. In addition, make sure that you're using action words. So you did these things. Highlight the fact that you were the driving force behind it all. Yes, I could give you the opportunity to, to join a lab and to do some projects, but at the end of the day, no one held your head to the iron and made you do these activities. You did them. 
If you went above and beyond, tell me about how you went above and beyond. Tell me about how you are going to continue to go above and beyond in a similar way in graduate school. Make sure that you're highlighting your skills that have prepared you to succeed in graduate school. A lot of students will drop out or not continue on in their graduate program. Usually see about one person pro drop out every year. You want to be that person in this statement that they're going to say without a shadow of a doubt that I think this person will succeed in our program because they have already done these things or they have shown these strengths. And you really do want to focus on those strengths without overlooking your weaknesses. Again, being very specific about the program, about the advisor, about your goals and what you're hoping to accomplish, and whenever possible, showing a bit of who you are and what makes you special. In addition, we do have a bunch of resources here for you. And among these resources are several lists that can give you different tips and tricks for your personal statements. Some of these have examples on different statements that are out there if you're looking for language or some ideas on formatting or maybe some different ways that you can talk about your research or different accomplishments that you've had. A lot of these are focused mostly on uh, clinical psychology, although some of these also will help with other aspects as well as the student doctor forum. If you're not on this forum, you're gonna to wanna to be um, with you apply to graduate school. A lot of students will go on here to talk about different professors that they've spoken with, to find out who is or is not accepting students this year. They will also tell you when applications start to open or talk to you about um, different problems that they've had in the department. You'll also see a thread that will open up around, I think it's around like March, um, maybe even sooner, um, that will talk about things like applications and interviews. Um, people will start to announce when they have had an interview, when interviews close, if they hear that they've been put on a wait list, et cetera. All of this can add to your anxiety, so please take it with a grain of salt that if you are somebody who is going to stalk these forums and really worry about it, then maybe this isn't for you. But for others who will feel a little bit more relieved knowing that, oh, I didn't get a call, but several other people did for interviews. Maybe I'm just on a wait list or maybe this one isn't for me. I need to come up with a backup plan. Um, it will be very helpful to monitor those different things as well as Several people may talk on these forums, um, advisors or students in the program, to give you some tips and tricks specific to their university. Additionally, after the application cycle, you'll also see posts on here for schools that are putting out another call for applications. This sometimes comes out when students, maybe they didn't have a perfect fit, or maybe they didn't get enough applications for that application cycle and still have spots open, which may be a good opportunity to reach out to those schools and apply, even if the date has passed. And all of this will be available via PowerPoint on the Cowbell Connect website, as well as on YouTube. I hope that this was helpful to you. If these are questions that you still have, or you need someone to read over your personal statement, feel free to reach out to us at the Graduate Psychology Department Association at MSU. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have about the graduate school process here at Mississippi State University, as well as our own personal experiences, um, if that is something that you'd be interested in. Thank you for coming today. I hope you have a good day.